Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this day as we celebrate our love life in the Lord and we conclude our series uh, based on our theme of the year of being a family on mission um, this day, on All Saints Day, and recognizing that when God includes us in his family, it's uh, forever family. That death uh, is no longer a dead end, it's a doorway into the presence of the living God, and, and that's the hope that gives us comfort even as we grieve those who have uh, gone home to heaven. And so today we're going to uh, uh, turn our hearts and minds toward that as we celebrate uh, the love and life we have in our Jesus. We uh, welcome all of you, both members and guests, as we celebrate today. And we ask that you fill out one of the shepherding uh, sheets that's uh, on the table that was right by the bulletins. The bulletin has everything you need in it for our worship today. All the hymns are printed there as well. So we invite you to uh, pick um, one of those up. If you don't have one, everything is there. We'll be um, remembering those saints from uh, St. John's who have fallen asleep in faith this year. A little bit later in our service as we give honor and glory to our God for the gifts that they were, are, and continue to be in our lives and, uh, and for the blessed gift of, of the fulfillment of God's promises in their lives. Uh, let's uh, then begin by singing about the saints and our opening verses of For All the Saints, hymn 600. <laughs> Yes, 
saints of God, for the Father has forgiven all of your sin because of Jesus' death on the cross for each of you. As God's called servant, and by Jesus' command, I declare that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Jesus, my Redeemer and Lord, remember me and bring me into your eternal kingdom. You paid fully the debt of my sin. You raised me from death to life. Because of your love, I am absolutely sure of my place in heaven. Thank you for your grace and also bringing my loved ones who relied on your redeeming work into your presence in paradise. Help me to live faithfully each day until I also come to your presence, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise uh, as we turn out to the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 12. So who are the saints of God? The answer to that question is anybody who trusts Jesus as Lord and Savior. Who are a part of the family of God? Again, anybody who trusts Jesus and does his will, that is to believe the one who is sent by his Father. And Jesus says that uh, in this particular context in these words. It says, while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and his brother stood outside, and they were wanting to speak to him. And someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied to them, who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise and thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to be seated, and uh, we'll have a children's lesson in this particular time. to 
walk with you, and to walk with you until you bring me, until you bring me to my heavenly Father's house. To my heavenly Father's house. We'll continue with the singing of that. forever hope. 
the reality is that um, is that uh, in this world, without a belief that there's something that comes after, there is no hope. That if this life is all we get, coronavirus, political elections, and all, you know, it's not always a lot of fun. Um, and on top of that, you and I know that there are all kinds of things that make life not a lot of fun, accidents that happen, and economic cycles, boom and bust cycles that either bring you know, times of, of, of great profit and then times of great worry. As we make our journey in this life, it's often challenging, and, and God encourages us today to remember that behind all of the, the challenges is this sure and certain promise that it's all headed somewhere. That it's not all for nothing, but it's for something because of what he's done for us in his son, our Savior Jesus. And so he calls us out of that desperation into a forever hope. And, and, and this is something that the people of Israel could resonate with. So just before our text, in chapter 24 of the book of the prophet Isaiah, we hear these words spoken of by the people of Israel. But I said, I waste away, I waste away, woe to me the treacherous betray, with treachery the treacherous betray. In other words, life is not good. And, and what Israel had done is that the Israelites had been unfaithful to their God. They had centered on something else besides God as their reason for living and loving and serving and blessing. And, and as a result, they followed other gods. And sometimes you and I are called uh, and caught in that same kind of web. No, they're not gods of wood and stone like uh, the Israelites have, but they're, they're gods nonetheless. It's whatever you and I look to to give us security and comfort, uh, to give us meaning, whether it's the work we do at a job or whether it's the family that we have or another person in the way that they view us and think of us, or it's the way we look on the outside, or it's our intellect, or it's our athletic prowess, whatever it might be that we look to. Uh, for significance or worth of meaning and value, if that takes the place of God, then we've got an idol as well. And those idols will always enslave us. And they'll always leave us wanting. And, and sooner or later, you know, things are going to happen that that idol gets removed. And when that idol gets removed, then we feel like the Israelites, like there's treacherous and betrayal, and, and we can't see any hope. But God is inviting us once again today on this All Saints Day to have our hearts, our minds, our lives centered in Him. Because He won't disappoint. In fact, as, as far as the people were looking at their day and age, there was no hope. And God says this on this mountain. What mountain? Well, it, on the city of, of um, Jerusalem, there are a couple of mounts. Mount Moriah is the one where uh, Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac. It's where the Dome of the Rock is built, the Mount Zion. And God says through the prophet um, Isaiah, on this mountain, on this very mountain, I'm going to work something wonderful for you. I'm going to defeat your enemies. And, and when you see it, you will know that your hope is secure. Specifically, what does he say? On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. He's going to prepare something for his people. And this is one of the pictures in the Old Testament of the heavenly wedding bank. <coughs> it's a picture of a feast, and it's the best of meats. That's the fattest pieces. That's AAA prime. That's the most expensive steak you can order on the menu. And it's the finest of wines. It's not the $10 bought bottle. It's the $100 or $500 bottle. <coughs> It's the best of meats and the finest of wines. In other words, he says, there's nothing better. All of the things that you desire and want in your heart of hearts are going to be fulfilled if you're sharing that meal with me. And notice the, the, um, the, the verbs in this particular. That's what I haven't read here. He'll prepare. Who's going to do it? We don't, 
prepare it ourselves. He's going to prepare it for us. He's going to serve us. Isn't that a marvelous <coughs> gift? We are serving him, but he serves us. And, and how is he going to serve us? Well, the second verb is he'll destroy. Destroy what? The shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. The shroud and sheet immediately bring to mind uh, that death is that greatest enemy that began already in the Garden of Eden when God said, the day you eat of the fruit, you're going to die. And when he said to, to, to Adam, dust you are, and to dust you shall return. But that, you see, was not the end of the story. Because he had also said to Satan, I'll put enmity or hatred or air of anger or warfare between you and the, and the, and the seed of the woman. And he will crush your head and you will bruise his heel. And God's promise continues in and through the words of the prophet Isaiah. And he says that enemy death is going to be completely destroyed. In fact, it's going to be swallowed up. And that might call to mind that image of the snake in the garden. Who swallowed up its enemies. But God swallows up his enemies. And that means he destroys it. And he takes it into himself, which is what Jesus did on the cross. He took the very poison of your and my sin into himself. He suffered and died on that cross for you and for me. And because he took it, it can't touch us anymore. And for that reason, he can wipe away the tears from our faces. And by his love and grace, he removes his people's disgrace from the earth. You know, this calls to mind all of those promises of how great and full and deep and wide and high the love of God is that as far as we've been saying in the previous liturgies this fall, as far as from the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. All of those images, he casts them into the depths of the sea. You see, he removes his people's disgrace so that when you and I stand before God, we don't worry about the sins we have committed our committing back because we have Jesus our advocate who stands for us who swallowed up all of that disgrace that sin that and the consequences of death so that you and I can have this forever hope we don't have to wonder have I done enough have I been good enough am I possibly going to get into heaven you know I, I always get bothered when I ask somebody who I know is a Christian um, are you going to be in heaven? And they say, well, I hope so. <laughs> Wrong answer. It should be, yeah, I know yeah. so. Absolutely, positively. Because of what Jesus has done for me, I don't have to wonder or worry. Um, he's removed my disgrace before the Father. And that forever <clears throat> hope is better than, if you can think about it, one, one author put it this way, it's better than any sunrise or sunset you've ever seen. It's better than any, you know, time of praise when you are caught up in it and really getting into it. It's better than anything that you and I have been engaged in. It's better than any resort vacation we've been on. Because the Apostle Paul reminds us that there are no words that can describe what it's like to be in the presence of God when he was caught up to heaven and says there are no words to express it. Nothing that you and I have experienced in this life can ever capture what God has in store for his children. You know, what's the best vacation you've ever been? You know, think about that. Could you imagine before you went on that vacation what that was going to be like? Right? And that's how he pictures heaven for you and for me and for all the saints who have already been gathered and are waiting for the banquet to start in his presence. It's a forever hope that Isaiah pictures for his people and pictures for us today. And we're certain of it because as he says, he swallowed up death by his own death. He conquered death by a death. He took the punishment for us, living an innocent life in our place and then dying that innocent death in our place. And then he rose from the dead so that there would be no doubt that you and I are going to participate in the resurrection. 
Jesus' uh, resurrection is often proclaimed as the first fruits of those who have risen from the dead. And the concept behind that is just like the first zucchini squash that's on the plant. You better get ready because the rest are coming. And Jesus said, if you want to know whether I say what I say is true, tear this temple down in three days, I'll raise it up again. And he was talking about his body, his resurrection becomes the foundation of our faith. Not only that his words are true, are true, but that we will rise from the dead and that our loved ones who have fallen asleep in him are going to rise from the dead as well. I often explain to families as one of the reasons why we have a lot of the things that go around our, our, uh, our experience of funerals, right? The casket is a symbol for a bed. The person's head is often laid on a pillow. Even the word for cemetery in the original language comes from a word that means a dormitory. It's a place to hang out until your room's ready. Your body, your body to hang out until that room's ready again. All of those things are to remind us of this forever hope that we have that brings us then a forever comfort. And every time we come to the Lord's table, as we will again next week, we have a foretaste, it says, of that feast to come. You see the Lord's table, the Lord's supper looks in three directions. Uh, it looks to the past to remember what Jesus did for us, that every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, we remember his death. It looks to the present because we're proclaiming that death and its power in your and my life to remove our sin and for everybody else who participates in that supper to remove sin. And it looks forward to that time when Jesus said, I'll not drink the fruit of the vine again with you until I drink it with you in the kingdom to that heavenly banquet table when we'll have that resurrection reunion with all those saints who have gone before. Us. And that's what brings us comfort when we attend a funeral. It brings us comfort because we know it's not the last time we're going to see that person. I always say it's a good time to be German because then you can say goodbye to that funeral. You can say all Peter's and which literally means till I see you again, till I hear your voice again, till I have the opportunity to experience your presence again. And in the meantime, as you and I think about our loved ones, very often we've got a kind of not such good picture, especially if uh, there was some disease and other things that happened along the way. And so it's helpful to be reminded that God has already provided presence uh, for, for those souls in his presence. He's provided for them. And we hear that in these wonderful words of, of the, the book of Revelation. You see, Revelation was also written for people who were going through uh, a time of trial. And the Christians were being persecuted at this particular time, some in some very terrible ways. And so the book of Revelation is written to comfort Christians. Uh, so this is a little side note. If you read the book of Revelation, you get scared, you're getting the wrong message. Because it was written to comfort Christians who were going through a challenging and, and so when you walk away from the book of Revelation, you should be comforted by the message that God is in control. That's helpful to know as we walk into a week of an election. Right? God is still in control. And we entrust our lives into to him. He can still work everything out for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And, and we know that the saints in heaven are those who have come out of the great tribulation. Their time of struggle with sin and disease and the frustrations that we have in this world are done. Their robes have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of sacrifice of Jesus who died for them. And now look what it says about them. Here's all the verbs here. They are before the throne of God. They serve him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne is sheltering him with his presence. They're not hungry. They're not thirsting. They're, they're not experiencing uh, deathly heat or blistering cold because the Lamb, the one who laid down his life for them at the throne, continues to be their shepherd, the shepherd who has now led them 
into the presence of the angels to share with him their joy. He leads them to springs of living water that uh, is an image of water that gives life. Um, I often use the, the two seas in Palestine as kind of uh, an image of those two things. The Sea of Galilee in the north, water comes in and comes out, and so there's a lot of fish there. But water only goes into the Dead Sea. And there ain't much life in there. There's a little bit, but there ain't much. Because it doesn't give what it And God calls uh, us to see people who are sharing in his presence having the living water. What is the living water? Well, if we read about it in the book of John, remember this is John who's writing this. It's the spirit that's poured into his children. We read about it in John chapter 4 and John chapter 7. The spirit that's poured into his So they still are celebrating the presence of the spirit in their lives and God wipes away, he says, every tear from their eyes. Precious promises. For us. And I know there's all kinds of questions. You know, like what kind of bodies are we going to have when we come back? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us much except it's going to be like Jesus' body. He's transforming us into his glory. And, uh, and we'll be sharing a body like his resurrected body. The trouble is none of us have seen him, so we still don't know exactly what that's like, right? He could disappear, but he also could eat fish. Um, so that body is going to be like ours. Um, he still had scars. Are we going to have scars? You know, those are all kinds of questions that we can't answer because the scriptures don't tell us. But here's uh, a question that often comes up, and Jerry Sitzer writes about it in his book, A Greek, Dis Greek Disguise. Um, his uh, wife died while well, his children were very young. And he said it was really, really tough on his kids. And, uh, one of his, his boys, especially, was not very talkative about, uh, about mom's death and about uh, missing her. And he said, so he said, I always paid really, really close attention whenever he brought anything up. And he said, one time we were on a, in a car and we were driving, and all of a sudden out of the blue, he says, Dad, do you think mom can see us? And he said, rather than give an answer right away, I just asked him, well, why do you ask? And he said, because if mom sees us and sees how sad we are, do you think um, she can see us? Because you know, the Bible says that she's going to be happy in heaven, that it's blissful in heaven, that she's full of joy in heaven. So how can she see us being as sad as we are and still have joy? And Jerry says he, he was quiet for a little while because he had to think about it. When, when he answered his son, he said, well, son, I, I do believe she, she does. But the reason why she still has joy is because she already knows how the story ends. In the presence of God. Where she is. And so even though she might see our sorrow, she knows how the story ends. And, and thanks to the word of God, you and I know how the story ends too. It's why we have this forever hope, and it's where we get that forever comfort, even as we deal with grief when it comes in the wave in our lives. Would you rise and let me pray? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you this day for all the saints who are already in your presence, for all the saints who are on their journey there, including all of us, and we just ask that you would, as we make that journey, continue to fill us with that forever comfort and that forever hope that allows us to grieve, but not as those who have no hope, to grieve with the sure and certain knowledge that there is a room that's got our name on it, and there's uh, rooms in your Father's house that are already occupied, souls waiting for their bodies to rise from the grave and and to join with us in that resurrection reunion at the heavenly banquet table. As we make our way through life, Lord, continue to bless us with that forever comfort and forever hope in the power and promise of your love. Amen. May now that peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in your Jesus, the life everlasting.
Let's confess our faith. This uh, week we're going to use Luther's explanation of the third article as it's printed for you. Would you join me in reading that, uh, that portion of confession? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church. And he said, with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and gives eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. God's word for stewards this day. In the book of Revelation, it talks about two resurrections. The first one is the resurrection from spiritual death and spiritual life. And we have this wonderful promise that the second death, physical death, loses its power when that first one happens in these words. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God. seated as we join in our uh, our
burden. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you the crown of life. Gustav Jim Henneman. Jean Hollenberger. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Herbert Loki. Clara McKinney. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, he will transform our holy bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Lois Bowen. Joseph Ochal. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my strength has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. Jerry Shanefeld. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Donald Howard.
continue to walk with them and with all husbands and wives until you gather us all to yourself at the marriage feast of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as we continue to live in this earthly kingdom, we pray for your guidance and provision through our elections this week. Guard and protect those who are voting from the spread of the coronavirus and intimidation, and direct and guide those who are elected to work for the benefit of all the people of our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Spread your protecting hand over those who serve in the armed forces. Confirm their path as they live with the end in mind, especially Chrissy and Ryan and Julie and David. Benjamin and Christian. Thankful for our first responders. Bring us comfort and safety through their service to us. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us as we share an eternal perspective of, on life among our family, friends, acquaintances, and neighbors. Be with Lizia Lutheran Church and Pastor Casango Gicabello, people of the Book Lutheran uh, Outreach, as they confess your name in our community. And also with Chaplain Emma McConney as he works in helping prisoners and ex-offenders find true freedom in your son, our Savior Jesus, through the free at last ministry in the House of Correction. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, bless our households to be filled with serving saints. We thank you with Daniel, Esther, Daniel, Nathaniel, and Nicole Inyang for good health and for many blessings. And we ask for continued grace, guidance, and protection in these interesting times in which we live. Along with Marcus Kirk and Siorma Garay and Kehlani Kirk, we ask for daily strength. Continue to do your sanctifying work at Mark Hay and Kevin Immick, Karen Jacobs, Tom Bridget, and Becca Malazuski, and fill us with comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Before we go with God's blessings, just one more reminder that we have a voters' assembly next week in place of Bible study immediately after our worship service. Now God speaks, uh, Jesus speaks these words to us as his saints who are awaiting that time when he calls us home. He says, be dressed and ready for service and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Go out into all the world now ready for service to God's world with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give to you.